have to mention the hot news of the last couple of days or so has been Louis Vuitton finally announcing who's going to be their men's creative director going forward for the next couple of years or few years, I guess, a permanent one. And it's been a bit of a wild card pick, a little bit of a, um, you know, a, a pick that came out from far, far, far out wide that I wasn't really expecting or really um, I would have guessed it in any way, shape or form. And they've announced that Pharrell is going to be the next men's creative director. Pretty, pretty amazing, pretty sick, pretty out there, pretty unexpected, considering all the names that are being floated, considering the approach they're trying to do going forward, considering everything that was said by LVMH, the rumours, the insiders, blah, blah, blah. I don't think anybody really had Pharrell's name on their list in terms of potential replacements for the deceased, um, unfortunately, Virgil Abloh, who obviously was leading the charge over there, did some interesting and great things going forward. So it says here, because of the tweet from Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton appoints Pharrell as its new mentor creator director. His first collection for Louis Vuitton will be revealed this June, so only a few months coming um, during Mar during Men's Fashion Week in Paris. So he doesn't have men, you know, you know, a lot of time to kind of enjoy the moment and to soak it all in and to receive all the DMs and the emails and the praises and the text messages and the calls. He has to kind of get to work pretty sharply to present this collection that's happening in June already. So pretty wild. So I would assuming he's going to do his own collection. It's not going to be anything that was archived from prior times of Virgil. Um, you know, we saw what happened with the cult with the kid super guy. He kind of went in there, did his own thing for a while. So it's clearly something he has to turn around pretty quickly. And then um, we've got more information here. Courtesy of Louis Vuitton. So Louis Ferrell Jones, Louis Vuitton as the men's creative director and will debut the collection for Louis Vuitton in June during men's fashion week in Paris. That's Ferrell there pictured signing the contract. It looks like like a football player sat next to a think the new LVMH CEO and I think he's also the person who might be responsible for bringing Pharrell to there over there so there's a lot of you know overlap in that regard and another tweet here saying Louis Vuitton is likely to welcome Pharrell as new men's director his first question will be revealed next June during men's fashion week in Paris so this is pretty interesting I think when I read it originally it said next June I just assumed they meant next year, so that would give him ample time to kind of get his feet under the table and learn and kind of, you know, iron out the kinks and blah, blah, blah. But they actually mean next June as in June coming up, which is pretty crazy to think for somebody that has no fashion experience. So for me, taking into consideration just the pictures overall, I think that's be a good way to kind of tell the picture. So there's a picture here of Pharrell. I don't think it's an old one. I think it's a recent one, but it could be old because the guy is always ever young. He's like the flipping black, you know, Benjamin Button. But, Obviously, selecting somebody like a Pharrell Williams to take over Louis Vuitton isn't necessarily done on the basis of his, you know, acumen as a designer, his fashion expertise, or any way, shape, or form. It's clearly something done because of his cultural relevancy and his, um, you know, and his, um, what you call it? What would you call him? You call him a, a really high level tastemaker in that regard. Those things kind of contribute to. I think his contribution to music could be somewhat related to it, but I think that's completely separate in my opinion. Um, but I still think him culturally as a person would obviously lend people like Louis Vuitton to look at him and think, you know what, he could be someone to take us forward, especially when you think about what Louis Vuitton, what Louis Vuitton was like when Virgil was in charge. I think they realized that having that person leading the charge who was a cultural phenomenon kind of did a lot more for the brand and its reputation how it's perceived than having somebody that's really technically astute in terms of putting together collections and designing clothes and whatnot so that makes a lot more sense right for the person for williams gets it in that regard then i look at this picture for williams sat next to the lvmh ceo and it makes me think you know what this this would this should always been the option this was always going to be the pick because it feels like a fresh pick and it feels like something that this CEO probably dreamt up himself as an idea because I feel like the names regarded or floated prior, like the Martin Rose, the Grayswell Bonners, the Samuel Rosses. I think those names were names that were floated by whoever was in charge prior. So whoever hired, again, I don't know any details. I'm just kind of guessing off the seat of my pants here because I think that's way more fun than flipping going in and fucking finding the information. So just bear with me. And I'm talking about this kind of, come from my point of view as ill-informed as you may think it is just bear with me i have a feeling that whoever signed virgil ablo or to louis vuitton at the time to make him into a director is not the same person who's now in charge and that person which obviously would make sense because it's a new ceo I'd, I'd assume if that's the case then like any big corporation 
when it comes to the creative directors and CEOs and stuff, because I know it happened to me when I was like, working at Nike. I was working at Nike for a while, this really cool Nike energy store in Shoreditch called 1948. Some of you may know of it, some of you may not. It's like similar to Mercer Street type of store. And I was kind of brought in under the guise or under the kind of purview of one sort of leader or creative director or kind of manager or spearhead of the Nike energy marketing team or something along those kind of lines. And then um, that person ended up leaving just before we, we opened the store, but they kind of handed it over to another person who had a, kind of the same taste as them. So we stayed and we were okay. But as soon as they, that person, so those kind of two bosses I kind of had in the beginning, then as soon as the third boss came in with, you know, I don't know, four years into the term of us being in the store, we started to notice changes because clearly they had a different direction or different idea of what they wanted Nike to represent and who they wanted to represent it and what they wanted, you know, them to look like. And over time, that new person, when they came in, slowly but surely got rid of us and replaced us with new people because they wanted to start afresh. And I think that happens a lot with creative directors. And so it happens a lot even in football when a new kind of, you know, owner takes over, a new chairman, a new sporting director, they usually have their own manager they have in mind who they want to, you know, spearhead their 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 flipping plan and they also have players they're identifying maybe a style of play and i think it was the same way in fashion so this was always going to be the choice it was always going to be somebody that wasn't on the list that we heard already because i think that list that featured grace wall bonner that featured martin rose that featured samuel ross and a few others and um sorry the guy from um telfar clemens and a few other people i think that list was a list that was made up by the previous person and then this guy who took over clearly wanted to you know um write his own you know his own chapter in the Louis Vuitton history books and decided to go with somebody fresh and then obviously picking someone like Pharrell out there as an option would be the best way to kind of go forward with it and it's kind of a ballsy move is also in that regard but then we're going to the final picture here with you know Pharrell covered in this um what looks like a big blanket a Louis Vuitton blanket right and he looks really cool in it and it's a really captivating picture and whatnot and I think in general this probably is one of the reasons why they kind of want to get him involved because I think of iconic Louis Vuitton imagery. I think of Pharrell holding a really amazing mink, I think, scarf, LV scarf, maybe during the Mark Jacobs era. I think of Pharrell Williams' contribution to the flipping millionaire glasses and stuff and how popular they were after a while, right? Those glasses were everywhere. I remember when they dropped and people were buying them and trying to resell them, even back when they originally dropped. And now they're worth, you know, way more than they were back then. Virgil Abbott did his own iteration of that you know millionaire when he was at Louis Vuitton that was super popular too so for some reason with the gays I don't know why gay guys love millionaires but it's become really popular with them and there's another iteration of them also with that kind of mo that kind of star monogram type thing in the middle that gay guys tend to kind of like obviously so it done pretty well and I think of there's loads of you know, I can think of more maybe with trunks as well of you know um, Pharrell holding LV trunks and whatnot so the imagery around Pharrell and El Louis Vuitton has kind of been long lasting as much as he's been associated with Chanel and stuff that kind of wrangles true so i can definitely understand why they're going with it that way because you'd imagine somebody who has such impeccable taste that he has right i'd imagine you know i'd always describe for as like a consumer consumer right one of the most high level consumers out there so for sure that would make sense why they'd kind of pick him but the issue that i kind of have with it and i think it's kind of a little bit of a problem because i don't think the fa the fashion industry has been really honest and upfront about it is that it really does set a bad precedent and it probably is a little bit demoralizing if you're a kid out there at the moment going to parsons going to central st martin's going to university arts and other places as well that's you know study fashion and whatnot it can be quite demoralizing to see somebody who has absolutely zero fashion um knowledge experience um at all in the industry getting such a prestigious quote-unquote job um, because essentially what you're being told now in real clear HD 4K is that it doesn't really matter what you know. If you've got some level of clout, some level of notoriety, some level of hype behind your name, you've got a f decent following on your own regard, you can essentially be put plug and play style into any house that you want. We've seen it already happening with Virgil, RIP. We've obviously seen it happening with what's going on with Matthew Williams at Givenchy. I think Heron Preston, right, he's doing his own namesake brand, but I think he'll probably be the next one of that group probably getting plugged in. We saw what you call it, Jerry from Fear of God did with, I forgot the Italian brand that he was hooked up with, that he was doing collections with. So clearly i think these brands and these houses and these conglomerates fashion conglomerates have seen the value of tapping into these guys and gals who already have their inbuilt crowd their inbuilt following and just giving them access to their resources to their production to their team to present a collection and you would imagine for the most part i think it's like a well-run football
football club if you have a well-run football club that has a vision for how they want to play they have a vision for what kind of players they want to recruit what kind of culture they want to permeate how they want to be seen in the world of football blah 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 and you insert any decent manager around the world who has a winning mentality who can get along well with players who can you know integrate young players can get you tune out older players whatever maybe you're betting if you're a chairman or sporting director that nine times out of ten or maybe not eight times out of ten seven times out of ten you're going to hit a home run it's fairly difficult not to hit a home run and i think we already saw a little bit of it with the kid super guy the kid super guy what's his name calm delane right he did one collection with louis vuitton and for me i thought it was a diet version of virgil but what you can't say was that it was made poorly it didn't look made poorly it looked very expensive very high quality very refined very well made very well produced or everything else you want to say so clearly they've got a setup going on there at lvmh with louis vuitton where you can essentially plug in anybody even somebody that hasn't any fashion experience and they can produce a pretty decent collection or somebody that's got fashion experience in a very short space of time can turn it around the only issue obviously with pharrell is that i don't necessarily see him as a fashion dude I never have i've seen him more like as a tastemaker culturally but he's never really screamed fashion to me he just screamed if anything style and the ability to put really cool interesting pieces together and and kind of find beautiful things and highlight them and whatnot from his jewelry so details that he has all this sort of stuff whatever but a lot of it for me comes from my time growing up and kind of seeing his evolution over time and i think i've always been obsessed with pharrell when it comes to the music side of things when it comes to the creativity side of things when it comes to the goals inside of things and just the life messages and whatnot i think of some of the old you know um babe kind of dvds and these interviews he was giving back in the day and his hip-hop interviews from from back when he was doing neptune's things and you know i see a lot of kind of positive influences and things so i've gotten from it from back in the day but he never really struck me as somebody that i would trust to put together a good full collection and i think to myself of the history of pharrell making clothes and even at the height of when in their boys couples good because it's no longer good let's just put that out there because i think people are trying to rewrite history being in their boys club is trash now and back when ice cream was a thing as well right his skateboarding kind of offshoot team thing that he was doing that was in my opinion probably one of the most culturally important things that he probably ever did in the scene really in terms of what that did in terms of kind of profiling and platforming and bringing to the collective quote-unquote masses the idea of you know black skaters or just non-white skaters overall and kind of opening up that channel to people i'm sure there are loads of kids out there who probably had no you know vision of skating until they kind of saw pharrell um pushing ice creams and whatnot and seeing what's his name was it terry richardson terry kennedy i've got the guy skating them things back in the day that was a big deal even at the height of billionaire boys club when it was really sick the person that was really behind it making it really amazing was nigo and skating if i remember correctly again i'm flying off the seat in my pants if i remember correctly uh, being a boy scout was actually founded by nico and pharrell in the first place nico kind of recognized pharrell had good taste and had good ideas and just when instead of kind of pushing stuff and doing collaborations on under bape he said why don't just make another brand you know back then especially when you think about those japanese legendary street brands back in the day especially someone like my idol hiroshi fujiwara they were very open and loose and free with setting up little brands you know pumping out some products putting that together some cool little pieces collections and then just shutting it down after a while they weren't really precious about it they like just kind of have all these little offshoots i think of hiroshi he's got like probably 10 plus brands that he's done over the course of his career some of them are going some of them are defunct and that approach was really really cool so obviously if nigo kind of put the battery for us back and said hey i can provide you with stuff i got access to certain people i can put you in touch with and that's why the early 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 um ice cream stuff if i'm not mistaken was actually produced by babe again i don't, could be mistaken but i'm pretty sure being early being their boys club was made via babe and a lot of that stuff was obviously designed as well graphic design wise by skate thing who did some of the best graphics for babe back in the day so a lot of that stuff kind of came from that collaboration apart from that i can't think of many things clothes wise again he's done really good accessories really good small little capsule collections but i can't think of anything in terms of a full collection that i've seen from pharrell that would give me any confidence this is going to be actually good i can't can't think of it the only thing i can think of is you know pharrell's got this human race thing that he does with the creams um and uh you know and the self-care and the soaps and whatnot and if i'm not mistaken they've also got like a version of it that's like yeezy type basics but just in like more brighter colors essentially instead of it being washed out you know grays and camels and pinks it's like more ready poppy purpley bluey you know happy kind of colors that pharrell be associated with and even that stuff i don't think is that impressive so there's not a lot of references you can 
kind of look at and see and think okay here's what he's designed he's going to be cool you can find a lot of cool outfits of pharrell you can find a cool moments in culture of him for sure but in terms of being able to design i don't see it so if all the people out there that were questioning and having issues about you know virgil being the creative director of louis vuitton men's you should be probably way more concerned with this because at least virgil had off-white at least he had Pyrex vision at least he was putting together stuff and collaboration underneath the sun that he was doing obviously with Ben Troy and other things going forward Pharrell doesn't have anything so I think it's a really big step for him to take but it probably is the only logical thing to do now at his stage of his career what else can he do he's probably achieved everything else outside of it but he probably would have been helped to maybe have had a step in between going forward or maybe as well the other thing I was thinking is that maybe this was a capsule collection that was in the works because I think Virgil did do loads of things like that during this time at Louis Vuitton he had a ongoing collaboration and continuation of a story between him and Nigo that they were doing that wasn't the greatest in my opinion but you know the story around it is still pretty much better than what they produced from it so maybe there was already plans to get Pharrell involved also but obviously you know uh, Virgil unfortunately passed away so that kind of scuppered those plans so maybe that was that was part of the process of hiring him who knows but in my opinion I do think it's kind of underwhelming and I think as a person it's going to be a lot for him to go from you know working on music doing what he's doing with his human race and everything that he's doing humanitarian stuff blah 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 and then suddenly going to designing what four collections a year right um with the resort included as well and doing every cover collaboration and whatnot going forward so it's going to be a lot of pressure and it's going to be a lot of um it's going to be stuff kind of outside of his kind of purview but i guess the only other thing to kind of give him respite on that would be you know a brand like louis vuitton probably doesn't really care too much about what the ready to wear does really if you think especially the men's side of things they probably make a lot of their money from you know bags and wallets and perfumes and sunglasses and shit accessories they probably don't make that much money from their ready to wear but that's why the pharrell collab the pharrell kind of um so that's why the virgil ablo appointment was so cool and interesting and, uh, and kind of was a big moment for them because they got to kind of uh have a free shot and they kind of you know hit it out of the park essentially because they got somebody that was a self-sufficient um beast of a guy who wanted to pump out as much product as possible and you know these companies do like to pump out product and you know have stuff kind of filling landfills and choking turtles and stuff so virgil wasn't um shy about pumping out as much stuff as possible he obviously went to tell interesting stories he went to coll collaborate and connect he wasn't too proud or high and mighty for that sort of thing and he obviously revered and loved the brand also so was speaking very highly about it in public and kind of adding to it some lore and luster so for me it's very interesting to see someone like Pharrell who went on a really big campaign to kind of talk about how he was selling his old jewelry to kind of rid himself and cleanse himself with this and start a new chapter and not hold on to things and you can't take stuff with you when you pass away to now suddenly being plugged into LVMH and essentially be responsible for pumping out an untold amount of like unnecessary bull crap because even if he hits out a part there's going to be a few bits that in there that are going to be just you know whatever that are going to end up being clogged up somewhere in some outlet somewhere collecting dust or trying to be peddled to some you know unsuspecting middle east person under the guise that this is the only one that exists or something that's going to happen for sure so it's very there's, there's some sort of level of hypocrisy in there in one minute you're selling all your stuff to get rid of it next minute you're linking up your vmh and you're going to be responsible for many turtles kind of you know being belly up flipping at the bottom of the ocean somewhere but hey you got to do what you got to do but of course, in terms of what it does for the kids, it's pretty sick. They're going to be able to see, you know, somebody, you know, who's they kind of respect as a genius on one side of things in terms of music and the challenges and seeing them kind of do it in real time and be able to kind of relay that message or how they do things or cross over to fashion, which I don't think is going to end well personally for me. And the one thing that made me think at the end of it, that kind of made me laugh when I saw this immediately was like, if you're a fashion student out there thinking and seeing Pharrell kind of get this job, the one thing that kind of came to mind was this iconic clip. And what he said is, you are a celebrity. So basically what's going to happen is there's product here. And this is where you end up, right here. If you can communicate this product, you can make money off the product. Because look at Gaga. She's the creative director of Polaroid. I like some of the Gaga songs. What the fuck does she know about cameras? And I guess that's the thing you have to find out about Pharrell. One thing it does remind me of, I was thinking about as well a little bit, was... I remember watching loads of these kind of panel discussions on show studio that used to really infuriate me 
because I was thinking I was the only person I was going crazy seeing some of these students um, from fashion schools and really highly respected industry figures, you know, pontificating and getting really annoyed. I remember the early times of like Vetemont when it was doing bits and Balenciaga when Demi decided to point in there and other brands as well. I can't remember all of them, but I do remember them having a little real stick up their ass about brands that had become popular in the quote unquote streets with people, right? Real life people were buying these things and were really interested into it and were kind of invested into the story, blah, blah, blah. And for some reason, fashion people just couldn't figure out why is this popular? Why is this good? You should be, you should be fanboying over this brand, over that brand, over that designer. And for some reason, there was a lack of understanding or accepting of what the reality of the situation is. And I guess, unfortunately for everybody involved, celebrity culture has kind of permeated and it's kind of at the level now where you have that girl from Love Island becoming the crave director of flipping pretty little thing and stuff. And that only happens because brands realize the value of having these people who are well known in their own regard, kind of get plugged into what you're already doing. So what they're essentially doing, what they're hoping, which is what these collaborations are doing, they're hoping that, you know, one plus one equals two they're hoping if they plug you into their brand the give resource that you need to do you'll kind of bring across your inbuilt fan base and you also might gain a few more fans by the stuff that you produce so you're essentially hoping that their inbuilt fan base can kind of translate over and they can also produce given the access to the resources that you have so that you can make that money back and you know gain whatever you kind of gain going forward and this has kind of been the case for a while maybe for 10 years plus but we probably just you know maybe as people that are into fashion just didn't want to accept it but this is currently where we're at but i just still have the feeling that the gatekeepers obviously there are some them out there who are still perpetuating this lie and this myth that you have to go to fashion school in order to become the creative director or the head of whatever brand or whatever house and whatever line collection may be out there and clearly we've seen evidence that it's not the case like you know we've seen it catalogued over time and it's going to become more frequent going forward and i can definitely see you know some of these popping you know young streetwear brands and instagram brands that exist out there don't be surprised if you see some of those dudes you know suddenly becoming the head of whatever high fluent brand out there because sooner rather than later these these guys these kind of like you know pharrell generations virgil generations harry Presson's even 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 matthew williams they're going to soon become the older guys the kind of guys that kind of are out of touch and then soon they big conglomerates are going to start looking under, underneath them and start thinking okay what's the next tier going forward and you're already kind of seeing a little bit going forward what's Ian Connor's doing with Pastel and how he's got ownership of that and he's kind of trying to bring that back up and obviously I'd imagine try and launch it as a more serious fashion brand because he's already got his sicker thing going on so I could definitely envision envision a future going forward where the likes of you know um, what's his name where the likes of uh, ASAP Bari and stuff like that gets plugged into a really high fluent fashion brand because they want to plug in he's already existing brand he has been flown and plug that into your brand you know create relevance that way communication that way and whatnot and hope the kids kind of gravitate to it this is definitely going to be going forward so if you are going to fashion school you're going to it because you want to you want to learn how to pattern cut you want to learn how to do various other things and you know just have that experience of going to fashion school fair play but if you are legitimately going there under the guise you want to do that so you can become the next head of louis vuitton then you've seen evidence of it that's not the fact if anything it might be beneficial to actually work a real job quote unquote and actually just build your fashion brand on the side and actually kind of you you know kind of start it yeah build it on the side like you would do a startup or a small business and kind of go through it that way but whatever you know maybe there's a cashier of going to a school and being connected with that school and going to events i'm not really too sure but i would imagine that'd be a far better use of people's resources than actually just committing full to just the education and hoping that kind of gets you places because there's been many people i know of them who've gone to fashion school graduated with higher results and good results and good references and whatnot and have been able to land a fashion job it's not as easy because obviously you know um it's a pretty competitive industry out there there's a lot of really good people out there who don't have positions so you can battling with a lot of people so it would be nice to see a more variety of kids doing interesting things going forward i think it's different maybe overall in international but i feel like in london in the uk specifically there is a lot of still relevance and importance being placed in going to a fashion school over just like actually doing the work in real life and setting up your own label setting up your own brand and trying to actually sell product to actual real life human beings and kind of be able to kind of you know respond to certain things be able to create for a certain market understand business blah 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 positioning retail all those things are really important real life skills people need instead of just kind of focusing on the fashion 
fashion industry and trying to kind of speak to a very small niche plugged in group of people who don't really affect things on a big global scale so in conclusion i think in my opinion it's going to end in tears this for our appointment as louis vuitton men's where career director but because it's LVMH and because it's Louis Vuitton, it doesn't really matter. Because even if it is a failure, they could just go back to what they should have done, quote unquote, and hire a Martin Rose or a Grace Wall Bonner or a flipping Samuel Ross. But another theory that I'm kind of thinking of now, this is another theory that I'm thinking of. Maybe what's actually happened is that the likes of Martin Rose, Grace Wall Bonner, Samuel Ross, uh, Telfar Clemens and a few other people maybe they actually turned down the job maybe they turned down the job maybe they realized the importance of trying to build their own legacy and knowing that maybe they're all too young in their journey to be plugged into LVMH and doing that kind of role maybe they would prefer to build their own brand to a level where maybe later on down the line similar to maybe the opposite of what flipping Phoebe Philo has kind of done with her career and then do that when you're a bit older that kind of regard maybe there's that kind of thing going in there so maybe LVMH didn't have any choice but to hold her the cold delaying kid super trash and then hire Pharrell maybe they didn't have the option because all the options they wanted basically said no and kind of turned them down that could be definitely something that kind of played into it um, but for me I still think it's going to end in tears it's not going to end right but you know they got they got to try something they got to do something if anything I would have preferred them just to go a completely different direction and not try and be somewhat culturally relevant or try to cater or pander to some people would say to blacks or what not urban folks i think that would have been probably a better way to go about doing things and kind of reset the brand in some way shape or form but i do also understand the kind of the relevance in culture and communication and whatnot that would mean to it because you're hoping with Pharrell celebrity as well you know that front row is going to be absolutely ridiculous if you thought you know Virgil's you know show was a flipping clout party then you can imagine you know Pharrell's first fashion show at Louis Vuitton is going to be a clout festival so it's going to be absolutely insane that front row so they're obviously planning to get a lot of clicks and engagement through that through that appointment um there's probably going to be a few um you know viral bits and bobs that'll go around here and there but i don't know for me i don't necessarily see the guy as a fashion dude i see him more as a cultural icon a tastemaker a really high level consumer who's able to put together the odd cool collapse capsule collection and collaboration here or there but also i understand how well run these fashion conglomerates are and if you do plug in somebody that has a molecule of taste and, a, and an opinion and a perspective on clothes they should be able to do a good job and virgil obviously showed us he did the same thing as well despite all the complaints people had about his collection he still was able to put together by in my estimate i would say you know anywhere between a six to eight out of ten collections every season he didn't really go under under that and i think that's what they need you know in terms of um, louis vuitton and if you can get them you know some sort of you know attention and spins online and stuff that also kind of helps but if you can deliver six to eight out of ten collections every year you know keep stuff you know somewhat on the up and up you're going to be doing okay you're going to be okay going forward but hey, what do I know when it comes to that stuff, innit? I'm just a little old silly boy. What the hell do I know?